All right, we're ready to go. All right, everybody, welcome to the November 2020 meeting of the Measure AA Citizens Oversight Committee meeting. Uh, I'm gonna take attendance to just uh, verify that we've got quorum. Um, Creighton Nolte. Here. Ron Wheelahan. Here. Ray Dyer. Here. Woo! William, oh, sorry, William Becker. Not here as yet. Jean Marie Real. Here. And Sarah Gardner. Here. Okay, great. Now we can start. Um, does anybody have a motion to adopt the agenda? You should have all received that in your email earlier today. Mm -hmm. Creighton, is that a, I make a motion to adopt the agenda? Oh, sure. I was just checking out the agenda real quick, but I make a motion to adopt the agenda. Do I have a second? I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, great. Um, and I believe, do we now have William Becker on the phone? Yes, we do. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. This is the part of our meeting where we welcome public comments. Any member of the public is welcome to call in. Obviously, we're not doing this in person right now. So, um, Connie, do we have any members of the public that would like to make a comment? No, we don't have any. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, approval of the minutes. I believe you all received an email with the minutes. Maybe you've had time to read them. Connie put them in a new format. I think it's very readable, easier to follow along now. Thank you for that. Do I have a motion to accept the minutes? I move to accept the minutes. Thank you, Ray. A second? I second. Great. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, let's move into the interesting things. Then we're up to staff reports on the bond program. And I believe that is Eric and Nathan. Take it away. Sure, hello everyone. Uh, Nathan Thome, uh, bond program director. And uh, I'm going to share my screen so we can start our presentation. Let's see, let me get you to the, the right screen. <laughs> Hang on one second. That's what happens, you have four screens in front of you. Yes. It's hard to this select is, the right one. That's exactly what I got right now. <laughs> <laughs> so many right. moving pieces. Right, okay. So everyone can see just a slide right now, right? Yes. Okay, perfect. So uh, yeah, we have a, a presentation that's that's pretty similar to if you watched the last board meeting, but we do have a couple of updated images and uh, we updated our data just a little bit to be a little bit more accurate based on some comments. So uh, we are at about 62% of our budget is complete. Now this budget isn't just bond. So th these numbers aren't gonna match exactly what's in your report. This has uh, our some state funding, capital facilities. It's just kind of give you an overview of everything. Me, Eric and our team has on our plate for our projects. Uh, they are mainly bond, but uh, there's also some other uh, funds that we're helping to, to manage and uh, improve our schools. So we have quite a few projects in construction right now, uh, basically because we took advantage of not having students and we pushed forward a lot of our um, seismic projects. We just bid a big project, our Prospect Student Union today, uh, actually about 30 minutes ago, <laughs> and we got very good bids on that. So we're very excited about that. Uh, we are currently bidding, well, our our lease leaseback contractor is bidding uh, subcontractors out for the Del Mar admin and library project. So uh, we are moving really quickly towards some of our, our next round of big projects. Our big Branham projects and two-story buildings were uh, kind of our first major projects. And we're now going into some of our second uh, phase of projects that are um, 
going to be very impressive, I think, as well. So uh, this is a list of some of our upcoming projects. And these are two charts that we use to uh, manage and project basically how busy we're going to be and how much risk we're going to have on projects, where if you have on the left is our project budget. Uh, if, if a project starts in this fiscal year, as shown, uh, it's counted as a budget in that year. And the number of projects on the right-hand side, if a project starts in that fiscal year, it just counts as one project, or if it's on five sites, it counts as five. So you can see 2021 is going to be a high dollar, high number of projects starting for us, which means that uh, we are going to be busy. So there will be a lot of uh, change and big projects on these campuses coming up in this next fiscal year. So you've seen uh, pictures of these projects, but we went out and took some nice pictures of the two-story buildings, and we just wanted to share those with you. Uh, this project came out really well. Uh, this, pro this view, uh, you can't see from the street, but once you get into the campus, it is like a whole second quad in there. And uh, I think the landscaping on this project uh, really set it over the top. It's really nice. It's amazing how computer renderings can make it look so real. Right. <laughs> yeah, and this is uh, between the buildings. Uh, so now they, you know, they have their landscape space between the two. And just another view. And we're going to be putting, we're going to be updating our website a little bit. We haven't done it in a while uh, with some of these images. And one of the, the fun things that we did this is the first one we've done on this bond was to uh, commission an artist to paint metal panels that were put up on the side of the building to, uh, instead of being a big concrete wall, now we have uh, some school spirit on there. And I think we plan to do maybe one more on these buildings too, uh, which also helps being that it's on the street. It's not just big end cap walls. It has draws your eye a little bit more than just the, the big end wall. So this is from our drone, the aerial uh, view. Uh, this is actually uh, three images stitched together because the project's so big, I couldn't get the drone high enough. Uh, but it looks quite different from what it was. And I think I have the same image of during construction. So on the website, we'll have quite a few before and afters, which would be really fun. We have this image as a before and after too. Uh, I don't have the before here, but it'll be online. And we're still waiting. Our last piece will be an entry canopy that will have the same color and, in, uh, and metal paneling as the sides over here in the center. So that will kind of balance it out. And that is going to DSA right now. So Westmont, uh, we did a ramp, a handicap ramp. And uh, what I think our team does really well, and especially Eric with projects like this for you know even ADA projects like this, they add some landscaping and for very minimal budget to onto the project or even within the project budget, most of the time we can get quite a lot of value instead of just having an accessible ramp that's needed for accessibility, we now have a whole landscape new face to this side of Westmont, which I think turned out really well and stretches, just stretches the money a little bit further for something low cost, big impact like landscaping. So this is another kind of low cost, big impact for Boynton High School. We repainted the high school. We had heard for a long time that they did not like their color scheme, let alone it needed just a new coat of paint. And they're going to be getting their new uh, multi-purpose room gym. Uh, it's at DSA right now, uh, the Division of State Architect. And it will probably start construction in May, June, sometime around there. And it will be this new color scheme on the right. Their school colors with kind of our gray Wayne's coating like we're doing on the two-story buildings. And then we even painted the signage out front to really make their aluminum letters pop. That looks amazing. You know, yeah, we had heard from a lot of students that they feel like you can almost tell how much 
the adults care about you by how good their facilities look. Do you know what I mean? Like it makes you seem like somebody cares that they went to this attention to detail. So I'm sure people are really going to love it. It looks really, really good. Yeah, we're really excited to have the students come back and see their new campus because it's quite a transformation. And like I said, to have the, the new uh, multi-purpose room is kind of a big end cap to their quad. That's going to be, you know, two, two stories high, two and a half stories high with the same color scheme um, will really complete you know, Boynton uh, as a really nice uh, school. So I'll let Eric kind of jump into some of the stuff that's under construction. Um, like I said, this is based on board meeting. Uh, some of these pictures are already old within a couple of weeks, but uh, uh, he can explain to you what we're, what we're doing right now. Yeah, absolutely. So this picture here, this is, uh, this is the old Del Mar admin building. As you can see it here, there's still pieces in this picture of all the columns and the beams and, uh, and such. So this is, like, like Nathan said, this is about two weeks ago, three weeks ago. Now it's just a dirt lot uh, getting ready to start underground for the new project. Uh, but this is what it looked like that day. We have some awesome videos with a drone and with pictures and cameras. And so um, down in the bottom right corner, you can see what the new building is going to look like. And uh, the elevation changes. Most of you know Delmar, where you, you walked in on the, on the sidewalk and you had to walk up the steep little hill to get to the admin building. And then when you came out of it to go on the campus, you went down this hill. So all of that was non-compliant for ADA. And so the plan, of course, is to keep the elevation similar, but we're going to have stairs and ramps for the new building, which is a nice little seating area for the students outside when they're waiting for pickup. And uh, so it's uh, we collaboratively worked with the site with this and uh, the architects uh, come up with our final rendering. So that's the new admin on the right-hand side there. And then the... To the right of that, the little, the little white part was the student services all in the same building. Uh, this is again our, our big boy tractor out there taking care of uh, demolishing. Uh, this building was built in 1959 and it's, it's lived its course. Um, as we took it down, it was uh, pretty interesting how it was built, some of the stuff. But uh, this is a nice picture of the Del Mar admin coming down. Yay. <laughs> It's been a long time since 1978. I know Mr. Dyer spent a lot of time in the building as well. Yes, he did. So uh, the plan is all these redwood trees around are going to stay, of course. And so we're building everything around them. So they'll be, uh, they'll still be in place. This is the new Lee admin um, and student services, the same thing. Rather than knocking it completely down, we just took everything out of it. We gutted it completely. And so you can see from the street side all the way into the inside of the school property because they took down the walls and the windows. Um, this is the interior beams and columns that are in place to hold the roof up. And uh, this is about two weeks old as well because they've already framed all the new interior walls. And I know Kara, the principal there and I, and Dale had walked around um, and she's very excited about the new layout and how it's all designed. So this is moving right along as well. Here we have Prospect Swimming Pool. So this is a little bit uh, about three weeks past as well because since this picture, we've actually poured all the concrete on the deck, which means you can see the black rebar uh, crisscross on the last picture there. This is currently where they've um, poured all the concrete and they have, this is one of the sites that needed a small or a bigger shallow end. Um, so they have three lanes there for shallow water before it gets down to the seven and a half foot and then down to the 12 and a half foot. Um, so this is the prospect pool. It's moving right along. They, um, right now they're working on two ramps, which that dumpster in the top of your, of the top of the picture there, that's going to be a ramp. You can see on Nathan's cursor out here on the right, uh, they have that formed up right now to, to pour two ramps there for the access going in and out because this, it's a different elevation. And so that's being done right now. The far corner where you see the window that's taken out of the gym, pardon me, that was all stuccoed. And that's where the new scoreboard's getting put. It's gonna be inlaid into the, into the uh, soffit there. So it'd be really nice. So that project's moving along very well. <laughs> Westmont softball dugouts. This is a, the last softball dugouts um, that we've, for the district, we've, we've completed the other four schools. And so this one here, they just finished painting. And then we got some landscaping on the front where that uh, white trailer is. Uh, that's gonna start happening soon. And then uh, the softball, program is ready to go at Westmont with a brand new softball field. 
And for Mr. Nolte, they were pouring the foundations for the scoreboard today. Yes. So <laughs> Good. You don't see it there, but it is going in today. <laughs> Sounds good. Yep. So uh, that, that basically concludes our presentation. Um, we are uh, working right now. Uh, Eric's finishing up uh, quite a lot of seismic projects, like I said, and uh, another big project that we're working on uh, starting at Branham. Uh, we just need a little bit of clear weather, a couple of days of clear weather to start is uh, their tennis courts and repaving all their asphalt in the back of their campus. Uh, it, the tennis courts got torn up because the portables, the interim housing that was there, but those are all gone now. We don't need them anymore because our two-story buildings are open and we were able to get through all our seismic in uh, this COVID semester. We were able to pull those out early and all the asphalt in the back was kind of torn up from the pool and various projects and we can do it all nice and new and uh, kind of be a nice end cap to that campus. Hey, Nathan, what, what is that prospect? This is prospect. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're just kind of, yeah. We're just kind of showing the prospect tennis courts because they're blue and green, the new yeah. colors. And so all the schools have been done except Branham. Branham started yesterday, the jackhammering, and uh, they're going to mm -hmm. take that, turn it over 18 inches, uh, redesign it all. And then when they finish it, it'll be blue and green like this for Branham. And then like Nathan said, the blacktop is going all the way from Meridian all the way through the back of the campus to Dent, um, which will give it another 15, 20 years life with a new asphalt. So it'd be nice. Oh, good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nathan, they're I really like that. They're not just going to resurface, but they're going to tear it all up? OK. Yeah. I really Eric. like that new dashboard that you made. I think it's really is a very strong visual. Um, I really like that a lot. So thank you for making that. I think that that's great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. it's. It's pretty fun. It's a fun little tool too, because I'll go in and spend my, you know, however long to update all the schedule and all the costs and percent complete. And then it kind of, it's, it's fun to go check out to see uh, the progress. Yeah, I think that's great. Ron, did you have a question? Um, yeah, Eric, did you say that there was footage of the Del Mar admin building coming down on the website? Um, I can upload on the website. Right now I have it on, on my phone and also on the drone where we have the, have the image coming down. We do have cameras up on our website um, yep. for that project and also for the prospect project now. So if we go to our website and click on our, our links on the cameras, the prospect building, when we take that down in about a month or six weeks, we'll have pictures of that coming down. But we do have the uh, time lapse on our on our camera that we have mounted. But that, that day we took it down, we also took videos that we can share for sure, Ron. Yeah, if you could, I, I think there'd be some interested alumni um, wanting Absolutely. to see that, ad, that admin coming down on social media. Okay, yeah. thanks. Yeah. Maybe we can ask Sarah to do a blast about that too. We On the day of, we actually tweeted it out quite a bit and we were sharing a lot of stuff, but yes, absolutely. Yeah. Does anybody have any other questions? As okay. far as the seismic, Nathan was talking about our goal because with COVID and no students in, in campuses, we went ahead and, and jumped on a lot of the project. At Westmont, we did eight wings of seismic at the same time. And uh, our team took it on with four different contractors because I wanted to have two buildings per contractor, not to overwhelm any contractor because they only had 85 days max to complete the whole project. And I did explain to them that if you're every day you're late, it's going to be liquidated damages of 2,500 bucks. And so they understand December 15th was my drop dead day because we have to, our plan is to have the classrooms ready for school on January 4th. And so uh, December 15th was our, that's the dead, that's D-Day, right? And so at Westmont, all eight classrooms, eight wings, um, six are already doing a final punch list. The other one's a couple of weeks away. And so that's going really well. Um, we have four wings at, at Del Mar that are being completed right now. And they're probably a week away from final punch. And then at Branham, we just finished five wings the last five wings that they have. So mm. all three of those sites are complete with seismic, except Delmar has a couple more classroom wings that we'll do it during the summertime. Um, depending if, if things, if we don't go back to school in January, we may jump on those and get those done. But uh, we have a lot of plans and uh, things have gone very well on the construction side. Um, and I know the kids are at home studying and, and, and doing their best they can at home, but uh, it's given us an opportunity for the construction 
to move forth. And uh, we've done so very smoothly with uh, no illnesses and nobody, you know, um, nobody contracting COVID on any of our sites, which is very important. So it's been good. Um, Andrea, I do have a question. Nathan, um, Eric, are you planning on doing a similar um, uh, mascot for the Boynton site on the front? We have some pictures of the logo for the front of the NPR room. Uh -huh. um, I was thinking in front of the school as you um, walk up. We haven't discussed that. The only time the only time we discussed the logo on a building was the new building. Okay. And it's something that we could definitely talk, you know, talk to Sarah and stuff and get that ideally done. Sure. Yeah. I was just thinking of the full expanse now that it's green, of right. how that would really pop mm -hmm. as you're walking up to the school because that's visual from the street. I don't think the NPR room is going to be visual. Right. No, I agree. And that even on the NPR room, we actually had put it on there and then we uh -huh. took it off. Yeah. So yeah, it would make more sense maybe up front for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Hey, Sarah, did you have a question? Yeah, just this is more of a, um, a look. Branham, the two buildings look great and they're all repainted gray and blue and the logo looks phenomenal. I can see it from the street every time I drive by. The question I have is the rest of the school going to be painted in a sense to go with those new buildings? <laughs> huh. That's a great question. Because <laughs> so, you have gorgeous gray and then yes. you have the orange beige so one of the things that we that nathan and i have, have it's not planned in this bond to paint the schools okay it's not there's not an earmark of money set aside saying that depending on how we we're saving money right now on projects okay we are saving money because we're doing some early you know we didn't plan on doing some of the seismic until two summers from now well we had escalation built in at seven percent each year because it takes longer to do it so we're saving money. So with that, we would love to paint the schools. Okay. In fact, the Boynton school that got painted, we had, we, because we know the pricing is coming in lower than our budget, we knew that we were going to have a little extra money for Boynton. Okay. Um, I went out and got bids for, for painting that school. It was $79,000 to paint the whole school, which is really cheap for a school because we painted prospect the first year in here and it was like 450,000 to paint the school. Right. So if an entire school costs four or five hundred thousand dollars, it's a lot of money. And you have to have that plan and earmark for stuff. It's currently not on the master plan. However, at Brandon, we did the front half and then we did the pool. So it's the middle piece that's missing. Right. It's going to kind of be the same way in all of them. Del Mar, you know, their kitchen's getting redone. That's all getting painted. Their music room got repainted. The new buildings up front are going to get painted. And so it kind of, and we're going to have three new buildings there. Well, they're all going to have fresh paint. And so you know, kind of makes sense to keep moving forward. Our goal would be to paint all the buildings, you know, by the time we're done this bond. It's not allocated right now. Nathan and I have a feeling that it will be fine, that we'll have the budget for it um, because everything we're touching, we're painting. Um, and so, yeah, same, same thing with, I know everybody loves the, the two-tone color, right, Sarah? Everybody likes the, the rust color and the awful yellow. Nobody does actually, <laughs> right? No. So, Lee wants to be painted green. They want their, their gutters and all their trim green because that's their color. And so when we did their two-story building, it's green. We did their gymnasium. The trim is green. At Del Mar, their trim is black, right? And so we're doing, we're, we're color coding the schools the way they should be rather than making the same color for all of them, right? And so with Boynton being so awesome, how it turned out, you know, it's kind of a selling point and, and the board loves it. And, and so it's, uh, it's definitely something we're looking for. Thank you. Yep. Okay, anybody have any other questions? And I want to remind everybody there is a facilities meeting tomorrow at 3.30. If you want to attend that, Connie can send out an invitation. Um, and uh, Eric, Nathan, anything else? No. Uh, yeah, good news. All the EV car charging stations are up and running as of yesterday. Delmar was complete. They're still doing um, some cleanup on that side at Del Mar because that was the last one. But we did a final punch walk yesterday. So all the other sites, their car charging stations are up and running. And uh, this, I have a lot of community members that are very excited uh, to plug in and be able to charge. Um, so I know at the district office here, we have two or three people. And it's kind of interesting to see the people from off the street, their cars tell them where the closest charging station is. And so they drive <laughs> in here and, and charge. So that's kind of nice to see them using it and start generating some revenue. <clears throat> okay.
Okay. That's all I have. All right. Thank you very much. Yep. <clears throat> Thanks. Okay. And the next thing on R is key analytics and reports from Perry Pauls um, Patty Paulson. Hi there, everyone. Good to see all of you. I love I love the the before presentation because I'm not physically there. I love to be able to see. I, I see all the numbers and what you're spending, but to be able to see it full circle since I'm not in the area, it's really wonderful. You guys are doing a great job, and I love working with this team. They're they're very organized and and on top of things, and and so it makes my job a lot easier. So anyway, I really appreciate that, and good job. Everything looks great. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And for those who wanted copies, Connie, uh, I actually, Andrea, I think you actually distributed them, right? I distributed mine and Jean Marie's. I think I, Connie did the rest. Okay. All right. Great. So everyone can see my screen. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Great. Um, so one of the things I'll just mention in advance, um, we went ahead and migrated <clears throat> the district to our new uh, Keystone reporting platform. So we've been working on this uh, for the last few years and uh, gives us a lot of extra tools and reporting the capabilities, features uh, that are very helpful. So you're gonna see a little bit of a different look to some of the reports. Um, and so it's, it's exciting to get the district there. Um, and Nathan, for you guys, it's a whole separate system, separate and apart from our old system. So we'll need to get uh, training and sign-ons and all that. So um, it's very exciting to kind of get to this point. Um, so this uh, report, um, this page two, uh, this just recaps the bond, you know, we, the bonds were issued in two series uh, in 2017 uh, for 78 million and then the balance of the bond, the 197 million was issued August of 18. So that takes us back to the $275 million uh, bond um, for measure AA. And then um, this is up through September 30th. Um, and the interest we've earned to date, it's almost seven and a half million dollars. So we've got uh, uh, total project funds of 282,500,000. Uh, uh, um, total project expenditures as of the end of September was 152,371,000. Uh, Those are actually checks cut out the door. And then the additional encumbrances um, are the contracts and POs that the district has entered into. Uh, for active projects. And that's just a little under uh, $20 million. So our total commitments with spending to date is almost $172 million. Um, the budgets remaining for the current projects is $110.5 million. So that just recaps at this juncture what total um, budgets we have for the, uh, act the projects that are closed and then the current projects uh, remaining. Any questions on that page? Okay. All right. So then the next look we give you is an overall uh, summary report by location. And so you'll see a little bit of a different look uh, with this report. Um, and we now can, can easily summarize things. And on some of the, the next reports, you'll see we'll be able to do subtotals. But this just recaps uh, by each of the campus locations with the site code here. We use the district chart of accounts to um, uh, code everything accordance to their um, chart of accounts on how they're defining things. And just on the undesignated, keep in mind that um, a little over 15 million was the payoff of the, uh, the certificate of participation. So that's kind of the bulk of what's in that budget. Um, so that takes us back to our 282.5 million. So it's total budget, what's encumbered, um, the total expenditures, that's checks cut out the door. The remaining budget takes the total budget less what we have encumbered. And then the encumbered balance looks at the encumbered amount less expenditures. So that's how those numbers uh, from the prior page all come together with those summaries. And here, here you'll get it by campus. Then moving on to the next section, we give you the same kind of information, but we slice it differently. And we look at what the district's uh, cost center or their project type is. So this report we split between, uh, oh, this is by, by cost center. You'll see, um, so on the left, this project code on the far left, that's how the district defines each of the various um, cost centers that they're using. And so for each project, it's the same information with the same types of columns. And that takes us to uh, page nine, it's three pages. And that again, caps us back to that same 282.5 million with the encumbrances, the expenditures, remaining budget, and encumbered balance remaining. 
So we just take the same information, give you a little bit more detail uh, by cost center and site. And then we drill down even further into what we look at as the open or active projects. And so this is three pages. And now we have the ability with our new Keystone system, we actually can quickly summarize by subtotal. So you'll see, okay, what was under that undesignated amounts, um, each of the, the different locations, um, you'll see those totals. So again, we give you the original budget from the original master planning uh, sheet that total back to the 275 million, then budget changes, either pluses or minuses, gets to our total budget. And then the same information with encumbered expenditures, remaining budget, encumbered balance. So you'll be able to see for like, like on Del Mar, there's uh, on page 12, there's 43.5 uh, million um, was the original budget. Um, we increased that 1.8 million. So our total budget at this juncture is 45.4 million. So it gives the same information for each campus. So you can go through each of the different projects. So that takes us to page 15. So on the open projects, our grand total is 248 million. Um, we had budget changes of 8.9 million. So our total budget is at 256.9 million for open projects. And again, gives you the same encumbrances, expenditures, remaining budget and encumbered balance. Any question on um, that report? Okay, I'll move along. Uh, then we give you the same information for what's closed. And uh, again, so you can see that first line, that's the payoff of the certificate of participation. So that's that $15.5 million. Um, and again, it just goes through by each of the uh, campuses, gives you a subtotal on what so far has been closed. And this again is as of September 30th. So there's 26.9 million in uh, closed projects. Uh, 1.4 million, um, what was that? That was the original budget and then 1.4 million, they had some savings. So 25.5 million is the total budget. And that's what we ended up with the encumbrances and the expenditures for all the closed projects. All right, I'm gonna keep moving along unless uh, someone says stop. <laughs> so we then give I like you- the, I like the breakdown of the summaries like that. Yeah, I it's know, nice. I know. Yeah. We, I've been so excited to get all my all my districts moved over because there's so many additional reporting options and different uh, things. And we do have even a dashboard like Nathan has built into his, his sheets. Um, we have a little dashboard too. And so I, I'm excited to get Nathan in the system. And, and so he can hopefully use some of the, those extra tools um, without having to create extra, extra reporting information. So we look at then the encumbrance summary report for the open projects. And that starts on page 21. And this is 68 pages. So it goes from page 21 to 89. But then we give you for each detailed project. So remember before we were using more summarized information. Now you get to see under each of these projects a summary by vendor, what's been encumbered, what's been expended, and if there's an encumbered, encumbered balance remaining. And then we give you a description of the type of work that they're doing. So for any of the big uh, school projects, you know, well, here's a look at uh, the Del Mar school scoreboard. It's not a huge project, but you can see it was 255,823. Uh, 255, this is um, uh, everything that has been encumbered against it, the vendors, what's expended, and if there's any encumbered balance remaining. And as of now, that's, that project is wrapping up. So I'm not going to scroll through each and every project, uh, but I'm going to take you down to page 89 without making you too dizzy. Okay, so you can see here um, for the open projects, here's the 146.4 million encumbered. Our expen expenditures is 126.8 million, leaving that encumbered balance of 19, almost 0.6 million. So it just gives you a nice summary, a little more detail. And like, again, you know, we can run this report at the detailed level um, just to kind of save paper and be able to summarize the information into a more usable format. But the district wants to be fully transparent with all of their information 
uh, to the public. And so if there's any particular project the district or the committee members would like to see, you know, we really like to see this project at a more detailed level, we've got that information in our system. We just provided it the summarized uh, by vendor uh, report to be able to um, make it more useful to you as a reader. All right, and then okay. we give you the, yeah. Pat, don't be offended that we aren't commenting on it because it's kind of overwhelming to see it the first time. You know, yeah, you guys, yeah. Nathan and Eric and you, you know, you go through it in detail, but I'm scrolling through on the, the document itself and looking at everything and it is quite interesting. Yeah, so there's a lot, because our system is a true web-based database, no matter how we slice and dice the data, we get this to the same numbers as long as we use the same filters. Um, so I'd like that to everybody, you don't have to, if you don't have a question now and you spend some time looking over it over the next month, you can always email myself. You can email April. Um, you can email Connie and she'll get it to the right person and get your uh, questions answered. Yes, absolutely. All right. So then we just give you the same information, the encumbrance summary report for the closed projects. And so this starts at page 91. It's only 15 pages. So it takes us to uh, 106. Um, so you can see for like the closed one, like there, this one is Del Mar Building C Music Room. Again, you'll see all the vendors, what's encumbered, expended, and this is a closed project. So it's all zeros. So all of these will be closed. So I'm gonna scroll down to page 106. All right, so this gets back to that same 25, uh, almost $0.6 million of closed projects as of September 30th. Jeez. All right. And then we give you a project expenditure uh, cumulative summary report for the open project. So this is from the uh, inception of when the bond proceeds uh, uh, were received as of February 7th of 2017 through September 30th. We give you now in a format that is compliant with the state's um, uh, Office of Public School Construction. So really most of them will be, I'm gonna get down to a project. Um, this one is one of 37 pages. And so you can see most of the district's projects all had uh, planning and construction, not site. So site is the A category. So it's usually site planning construction, we call the ABC categories are the major categories that are used. And you'll see like under planning, there is architect fees, DSA fees, CDE, if they had any of these other types of costs. And we get a subtotal over here of 73,885. And then under construction, these are the subcategories under construction costs. So there's main construction, if there was any construction management, demolition, other construction, interim housing, uh, inspections, construction tests, any furniture and equipment and labor compliance. Mm -hmm. So that gives us total uh, construction and then what the total project costs would be. All right, so this, uh, this takes us down to uh, 37 goes to page 104. So I'm gonna slide on down and hopefully not make you dizzy. Uh, let's see, yep, there we go, all right. Uh, I'm oh, sorry, 144, there it goes. All right, so there's 126.8 million of expenditures that we have actually made physical payments out to the vendors. And then we give you the same information, a cumulative uh, summary for the closed projects for that same time period. So again, you know, when they paid off the certificates of participation, it's considered another co other cost. So there's the 15.4 um, million. And then again, these are all the closed projects. And if you get into, maybe we'll get down to one of the larger, like um, let's see, one of the large Del Mar projects, it's gonna have the same types of categories. So you have a lot of construction there. Uh, this There's a little bit of site cost for like the Del Mar uh, topographic survey utilities, um, which was some um, uh, surveying type costs. So there's 44,200 uh, $44, there. But it's the same information. This is a 16 pages that takes us down to the end of the report, uh, which is page 161. And so there's $25.6 uh, million 
of expenditures for closed projects. Are there any questions? A lot of information. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, the district does a good job. We upload their data, um, which minimizes any duplication of having to do entry. And we reconcile to the district's funds, reconciling to their cash, their uh, liability accounts, their revenues, their expenditures, and their encumbrances. All of that information uh, is in our system and we reconcile right back to the district's records. So it makes that job of trying to maintain a large bond program uh, such as yours, um, much easier once the data is in there. And then our reports are all, all geared towards facility type reporting to bond oversight committees and all the federal, state, local um, compliance requirements. So um, something they can't do in their um, QSS system that the district currently uses. So uh, that's the problem, you know, statewide, we, our company works with districts to help them manage the reporting because it is really a, a labor intensive job if you're trying to do it in manual type entry systems. So any questions? I have a question. Uh, sure. Several places uh, you have uh, in your uh, summaries uh, listed costs for interim housing. Can you explain to me briefly what interim housing is? I'm going to go ahead and defer to Nathan, <laughs> as he could probably explain it more. And I know there's actually been some savings in that area because you're not having to do some of that interim housing um, because of COVID. Uh, Nathan, you want to take that one? Yeah, so interim housing is really just a different word for portable classrooms that we bring on campus. Uh, most of the time in schoolwork, it's going to be portable classrooms that are chucked onto the site, hooked up. And we use that when we're uh, either demolishing classrooms or rendering them unusable through a seismic retrofit or something. Uh, but that is really our swing space, which is space that we create uh, to do a project. And then that interim housing is removed from the site when the main space is available again. Thank you. Does that answer your question enough, Ray? It does. Okay, great. If it was called uh, portable housing, I would understand it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it is a confusing term. Any other questions? Anybody else? Okay, please, I can't reiterate this enough. If you can't sleep one night and you pick this book up and think <laughs> through it and you have questions, please reach out. We are always available. Okay, thank you very much, Patty. You're welcome. Hope everyone has a wonderful Thanksgiving also. Thank you, you too. Okay, next on the agenda, upcoming meetings. And I didn't write down when the upcoming meeting is, so maybe Connie can help me out here. Sorry, I'm muting myself. It takes a little longer. Uh, it's February 3rd, um, 2021. And that works for everybody right now from facilities? Same time and everything? We would go back to our usual time, the 2 p.m. So, um, 2 p.m., okay. Wednesday. Could you repeat that date? February 3rd, 2021. February 3rd. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. I appreciate everybody's input and uh, help. Does anybody have any other questions or comments? Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Okay. See you in February. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.